Welcome back to the John Audio Tech Show. Must apologize for not having a lot of videos up lately. Just a lot of work going on and other stuff in my life. But, you know, always going to be around, so don't worry about that. And, hello. I have a squeaky kitty already. As soon as I hit the record button, the cat's got to get involved. But anyhow, I was working on my next audio-related video, and I had this problem come up. This is the ceiling light fixture in my kitchen. Of course, it's LED. And it stopped working. I turned on the switch. Nothing. Had very good luck with LEDs. I haven't lost one LED bulb in my house yet. All the other videos I've shot were LED bulbs that come from my parents' house, where they seem to lose LEDs more than I do. But anyhow, I have my Radio Shack meter set on diode mode. And uh, we'll see here if it lights these LEDs up. I can see by the traces that these are all in parallel. And I can look closely. It just looks like there's one die in there. So if I touch, there you go. Yep. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me turn this overhead light off. Yep, you can see that they all light. And I don't know if you can, well, you probably can't read the screen here, but it says 2.4 volts. So yeah, normal operating voltage or forward voltage of these LEDs would be around 3 volts. And they just start lighting a little bit at lower voltage. So I'll go around and check all of these LEDs, make sure they do indeed all work. Okay, I've done that, and all of the LEDs are good. No problems there. It's good to check them at low current because sometimes you have LEDs that, um, you know, one of them gets shorted inside, which wouldn't have been the problem in this case since the whole light went out. But it's good just to, you know, make sure they're still in good condition. And they all are. So it could be the driver or a connection somewhere else. I'm going to go ahead and hook this thing up to 120 volts and see if it comes on. Okay, plugged it into the Variac, set it for 120 volts, and just gator clipped it onto the leads there. And I'll turn on the Variac, see what happens. Oh, nothing nothing happens so yeah this thing is deader than a doornail okay safety first before I touch this thing I'm going to unplug it and uh, well, what do I do now this looks like a real bear to get into they wrap this circuit board around the driver and I don't know. I have to unsolder the uh, output leads from the driver. Maybe I can unscrew the driver. You know, it's right where this board is. I might be able to shimmy this thing out of there without having to take all of these screws out. There's 16 screws plus the two on the driver. Yeah doesn't look too fun to get into but I'll see what I can do from there well unfortunately I had to take all the screws out they used adhesive on this thing so it's stuck together and I got the top off or the bottom off this driver it's just clipped on the bad news is, I don't know if you can see that or not, it looks like they glued the board in. So this might be a one-way teardown. Well, if it is, not so bad, because I like these little boards. They operate at 3 volts. I could find all kinds of uses for them, and there's 8 of them on there. Let me take these batteries here. 
and power it up. Yeah, get it in the shot. Boy, I can find all kinds of uses. A nice 4100 Kelvin color temperature as well. Well, I'm going to see if I can pop that board out of there. That looks like we have a kitty on the bench. Hey, there you go. There's the Snickers. Whenever I'm on the bench, he sees me, hears me talking, I guess, comes up here and sits. Okay, well, I'll see what I can do with this thing. Okay, I was able to get the board out. It wasn't in too strongly. And I checked the power. There's a common mode choke. Some capacitors and things. Check voltage through the full wave bridge. So I was getting good voltage up to the driver circuit. Um, I checked the output circuit here. Everything's good. I checked solder joints, looked through a magnifying glass, and even used the meter. I couldn't find anything bad there. Using the diode check function on the meter, there's several diodes in this circuit. Uh, I checked all those. I was getting good diode voltages. There's a couple transistors. I was getting good junction voltages there. Doesn't mean the transistor is good, but, you know, in circuit... That's about as good as I can test it. I tested as many resistors as I could. They seemed fine. As far as electrolytic capacitors go, they're all good. This one here is 22 microfarads, but I was getting a reading of 100. But that's because there is a surface mount resistor across it its terminals and it's just skewing the meter so I think that's okay the one device I cannot check is this five pin device here which is kinda gunked up and mounted to the heat sink that's the actual driver IC and yeah it's yeah I'm just not gonna monkey around with that there's no way I can test it you know, I might be able to find a data sheet after, you know, I'd have to get this heat sink out, unclip it, get this gunk off, and hopefully I could find a number. I'm going to say that this thing is not economically repairable. But, you know, just kind of take you through some of the tests I do. You know, the output circuit checks out good, and I'm getting voltage to the driver circuit. It tells me, you know, something in this driver circuit here is not working. And as many components that I tested, I really think it's the driver chip. So I'm going to leave it at that. And the good thing is I at least get to salvage these LED strips. These will be very useful. Well, that's it for this. Thanks for watching.